artist today i have a process video for you and i hope you'll enjoy it if you're new here hi welcome my name is irit i'm an intuitive artist based in austria in europe and on my channel i share my artsy adventures if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down so that i know what you would like to see of course i would love to read your comments and I invite you to subscribe and ring the bell so you are notified whenever I post a new video. I'm trying these days to post two videos every week with um, some success. <laughs> and usually one of those videos is a process video and the other has more to do with art supplies. And, you know, as much as I, well, I actually enjoy making both of these types of videos, but my real passion lies with the process and especially this process that I developed for myself that I feel is quite unique and really speaks to not just my voice as an artist but also the way that my brain works and what I mean is that I have found ways to really make art in a way that is joyful from start to finish and allows me on one hand to make um, pieces that I love and I feel are unique uh, and on the other enjoy the process and also really find relaxation and painting is definitely my therapy. Um, I saw on Instagram somebody said this is cheaper than therapy. I'm not sure <laughs> in my case because I love to have all the colors and I love to try everything. Um, but uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a great <laughs> method of therapy. And I have developed, I... I'm going to call it, this is how I'm going to name it. And I did look on Google and checked that uh, nobody else used this name for this purpose. And I don't think uh, anyone has. All I saw were some math equations. So I think I'm good. But I have developed a way of painting that I call the rainbow method. Now, I did mention it in previous videos. So maybe you're familiar with it. But as you can see, I start almost all of my uh, watercolor and gouache paintings with a sketch in wax pastels. I will try to say which products I'm using as I walk you through my process, but uh, if I miss something, if you have a specific question, then please leave it below with a timestamp. Uh, otherwise, it's very, very hard for me to answer if I don't know, you know, exactly um, which product, which color you're talking about. So, um, I have found that starting my paintings with wax pastels works really well for me for, let's say, three main reasons. The first reason is that I really like how they look. I just like this kind of sketchy look. Uh, I would say my style is very kind of whimsical and really feels more like a sketch, uh, which personally, I love that. I love that look. Uh, of more kind of a loose painting. Uh, the second reason is because with wax pastels, they you will see these lines very, very clearly also in the uh, end result because I'm using Neocolor 1, which are the um, water resistant type. Karandash makes two types of wax pastels, Neocolor 1 and Neocolor 2. Neocolor 2 is much more popular and has more colors. And of course, <laughs> I like the other one <laughs> more, um, which, you know, I wish they had the same colors in both of these. And I sometimes use Neocolor 2 just because they have some colors that the Neocolors 1 don't have. But I personally really love actually the fact that they are water resistant. And that allows me to use watercolors and gouache paint on top of them while still they resist it. So that's that's the third reason. <laughs> I, I really like how they work with watercolors. They resist them. And if you use a white one, which I always use, 
um, you will get kind of also these white lines in the middle of your pieces, uh, which I love. Again, I love that look. And I just haven't been able to get this effect with basically any other supply that I've tried. Uh, something like oil pastels, of course, will resist watercolors, but I just don't like how gooey they are. They never dry. And they will also kind of mess up your brushes if you just paint on top of them. And the wax pastels are just perfect. Uh, and then with pencils, I've also tried doing the same thing with pencils. Um, they just don't deposit as much product as the wax pastels. And so I don't get the same resist effect. So I hope uh, that kind of explains uh, that. But another reason, actually, I should have said four reasons, is that by using the wax pastels in the beginning for a loose sketch, I also make kind of most of the decisions about which um, kind of subject I'm going to paint. And when I say subject, I'm using this word very loosely because as you can see, this is mostly abstract, but I do uh, include here and there motifs in my paintings that are, you know, more realistic. So in this case, you can see some palm trees, which is uh, a motif I've, like a subject I've been really, really enjoying. And there's also this kind of suggestion of domes, like these blue domes uh, that are inspired by uh, summers in Greece. So doing that with the wax pastels, it kind of, I'm making almost all of the decisions about my painting in like the first five minutes of painting. And for my very messy, cluttered brain, that works beautifully because everything that comes after that, I feel like I'm just doing almost like a paint by numbers. And I don't have to make those decisions. I just kind of go with the flow of what I created in those first minutes. And for me, I have discovered that I just love making art this way. One of the things that I struggled with as I was, you know, painting, trying to find my voice, trying to find my style, is that a lot of the things that I saw other artists do very successfully, th techniques, strategies that worked perfect for them, uh, I really, really struggled with them. And for a long time, I thought I was struggling because my skill wasn't uh, that great. Um, but uh, obviously, you know, you need to practice to improve your skills. But I also found that just a lot of the things, especially when it comes to, let's say, planning your painting or doing all kinds of like prep work or working in layers where by default you need um, like more than one sitting to finish your painting. These things didn't work for my brain. I lost interest. I just didn't didn't kind of mesh well with the process. And I really struggled with this. And, you know, I kept kind of trying to attack it from different angles. I kept trying to learn more and adopt, you know, strategies that I was taught by other artists. And it just took me a really, really long time to figure out what works for me. And I always say this, I think probably in almost like all of my videos, um, I still love taking online courses. And I think, I think it's very hard, or maybe it's not as hard, but it's definitely will take you longer to get to where you want to go as an artist if you don't invest time in learning from others, right? And especially people that have been doing what they're doing for like many, many years. Um, but I also really envy people. And I think I'm finally kind of at the place where I wanted to be for so many years. I really envy people that um, have this confidence of doing what they love in their way 
And I think as more of a beginner artist, I just came into this world. I came from the medicine world um, in my previous life, not previous life, but before I became an artist, I was a doctor. I just came with that, um, you know, perception or opinion that if I'm a beginner, by default, I know like a lot less than others. And I think in art, you know, it only applies like at some point you really have to do your thing. You really have to listen to yourself because otherwise you'll never develop your own unique voice and technique and style and process uh, because you're just doing what other people are doing. And I think one of the things that just didn't, I, I just never really enjoyed them is when I finished a painting and it looked like someone else's painting or it looked and it could have been you know the goal because many many times when you take art lessons or art classes you are encouraged to follow you know the same process and create a certain painting with certain techniques of a certain subject and um, again, there is room for that, especially if you know, kind of, you know, you know, you want to, I don't know, paint seascapes or something. So, of course, you should try and learn from someone who is an expert in seascapes. But um, I just, I, I really, really wanted to make something more personal and more original. Uh, that was... Yeah, that was my kind of personal goal. It wasn't just to learn to paint, you know, pretty flowers in watercolors because I did that and I took like a bunch of classes and I followed um, kind of the leading, most popular teachers that I could find online. And it didn't really, I mean, the process of painting with watercolors was great because it's such a wonderful and such a relaxing medium, but you know, I never really fell in love with the result because it it didn't come from my heart. And as much as I loved painting, I don't know, roses or bouquets or something like this, it's just, yeah, it always felt a little bit forced. And I didn't really know what to do with that for kind of for years. And I think these two struggles of, on one hand, really improving your skills and then the other struggle of finding your style, I think I kind of, you know, pushed back that finding my style struggle because I was sure that all of my challenges and all of my difficulties were because of my beginner skills. And that wasn't the case. And so I think what I really try now to teach in my courses and my classes and talk about with other creatives is that I really, really encourage people to kind of follow these two paths, m kind of make them one. And as you're perfecting your skills and as you're learning new things and as you're getting those brush miles under your belt, um, really develop this ref self-reflection and self-awareness of what it is in your process that actually, you know, makes your heart sing. And for me, it is the use of certain supplies that really bring me joy. It is the use of a lot of colors. Also kind of stepping back from that whole... I don't know, just I think paying too much attention to kind of how many colors I'm using and always being scared of making pieces that were too colorful because I was afraid that, you know, it'll just look like unicorn rainbow vomit. And maybe sometimes it does, but I just, I love it. I love color. And a part of 
getting to kind of making pieces that I really love was also the understanding that maybe it's not the number of colors that I'm using, maybe it's how they are placed in my painting. And if I learn to control that or kind of do it in a more strategic way, then it will actually work for me. And so if you see what I paint now uh, and compare it to probably pieces that I was doing um, a year or two years ago, I've been using a lot of color lately and I really, really love it. And it, it just, I feel like I know how to do that better in a way that I personally love. You know, it might not be your taste, it's probably not everyone's taste, but uh, again, it was just like this other, another level of figuring out what really works for me and is now, I would say, a very central element in my current paintings. Uh, I want to talk about just like a few things before this video comes to an end. So as you can see, I painted with watercolors. I am using, you saw before, I have two palettes. One is with gouache and one is with watercolors. And maybe in the future I will try to set up one palette to rule them all, <laughs> to have gouache and watercolors together. But for now, I it's working for me, but I do enjoy using both of these. And I just find that incorporating gouache kind of allows me to explore um, in a better way the more kind of pastel -y colors. I feel like, you know, with watercolor, of course, you can add a lot of water uh, or of course, you can also add white and you can still get uh, lighter, paler colors. But I just I find the, the combination of gouache and white uh, just works a little bit better for me. It has just a little bit more presence and that's why I really enjoy um, mixing these two mediums together. They're very similar and the setup is very similar and I just feel I can freely use them both side by side and still kind of get all the things that I want from each of them. Uh, and then the last step, you know, my process now, I have the pastels, which is really, really fast at the beginning, then the watercolors, that probably takes the most time. And then uh, in recent months, I've been using pencils for those finishing touches um, where I just like to make marks and fill the negative spaces and the in-between spaces with colored pencils. And um, yeah, that's kind of the final step of my process. Now I wanted also to say something, I don't know if I'll actually get to make that point, but I have been really struggling with painting again and due to kind of personal reasons because I come from the Middle East and there's war now going on and all of my friends and family uh, are affected by it. And so I've really, really struggled. And I have to say that, you know, I painted today and I'm recording this video and it did feel a little bit pointless, not important. Um, but I'm still glad that I did and it still felt good as I was painting. And so I hope if you're also struggling, I hope you will take the time grab your favorite supplies, the ones that excite you, the ones, you know, your best, the most luscious, luxurious supplies you have and sit down and spend some time painting. And that's it for now. I'll see you soon in another video. Take care. Bye-bye.